Elisafe Aerosavo says be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid, on view at Zenith Gallery. Elisafe Aerosavo's Zenith Gallery, they assemble different kinds of things in different sorts of ways, but Elisafe Aerosavo's and Susie Scarborough have complementary visions. The disparate styles fit equally well under the grand title of their Zenith Salon show, Journeys, Memories and Dreams for the Future, Susie Scarborough's, Floating Gardens, Susie Scarborough, Zenith Gallery, Collaging Art and Nature Images atop world maps, Scarborough crafts vast geographies that merge the actual and the fanciful. Pharaoh Savos makes painted polymer clay sculptures of single or occasionally twin figures, but gives these individuals a broader context by incorporating found objects and covering surfaces with repeated patterns. The statues, which always portray women, are often mounted on wheels or other forms of locomotion. The clay women appear ready to traverse Scarborough's imaginary terrain of flowers, animals and reproductions of celebrated works from art history. While Scarborough fashions mythical worlds, Pharaoh Savo sculpts legendary heroines. A few of her creations sport antlers, and most seem to be on the move or about to take a stand. One wears a gown of butterflies, an overused symbol in Scarborough's collages, but more typical is a horned figure whose head and torso are mounted on a frame ringed in spikes. She's titled, perhaps inevitably, Nasty Woman, Scarborough's symbolic landscapes, their pieces artfully fused with painting and glazes, bloom with variety. As populated as a large Bruegel canvas, the collages lead the eye from one incident to the next, without any central focal point. The motifs that Pharaoh Savos paints on her sculptures are usually simpler, although one of the women is wrapped in a shroud covered in old photographs. The piece's title warns against the absence of memory, which seems an odd concern in a show packed with presents. Both artists make fantastic whimsies that require careful observation of the real world. Elisa Ferro Savos and Susie Scarborough, Journeys, Memories and Dreams for the Future through July 7 at Zenith Salon, 1429 Iris Street. NW, 202-783-2963, ZenithGallery.com Forest Light by Karen Bruce on view at the House of Sweden. Karen Bruce, House of Sweden, most photorealist painters focus on urban tableaus whose hard, glossy surfaces allow the artist to demonstrate mastery of reflected light and refracted views. One picture in, still life, Karen Bruce's exhibition at the House of Sweden, does a bit of that, it includes a mirror in which the scene's photographer is visible. but the emphasis is on the figure and foreground, and the tone is intimate rather than impersonal. These are family portraits, visual caresses of Bruce's daughters, grandchildren and the artist herself. Bruce was born in 1950 and trained in Holland before moving to a sylvan refuge where she raised three daughters. One of them has made a film about her relationship with her mother, excerpts of which are included in this show. Bruce didn't have her first solo show until 2008 but is now considered one of Sweden's leading artists. The painting with the mirrored figures isn't the only interior seen in this selection. Yet more common are summery scenes of women, often alone, standing near or in lakes and streams. The water suggests transition, continuity and primal forces, themes also represented by several mother and child vignettes, a woman nurses her baby while a toddler sits nearby, or carries a small child while walking in a brook. Bruce's art has been termed melancholic but the mood of these pictures is warm, accepting and just a bit wistful. Aaron Bruce, still live through June 24 at House of Sweden, 2900 K Street. NW, 202-536-1500, SwedenAbroad.se slash n slash embassies slash USA dash Washington slash current slash calendar slash exhibition dash still dash life dash by dash Karen dash Bruce. Although each is an American abstractionist who emerged in the 1950s or 60s, Ed Clark, Richard W. Franklin and Kenneth Young don't intersect in many other ways. Their paintings represent three different dialects of the language of abstraction, their group show at the Art Gallery at University of Maryland University College. 
Young offers softness, fluidity and a sense of depth. Franklin employs geometric and architectonic forms and fields of weathered color. Clark stresses motion, spontaneity and epic brush strokes, which sometimes are actually broom strokes. Young, who died in 2017, spent most of his life in the district. Franklin is based in the Washington area. The well-traveled Clark returned to New York after two intervals in France. The show's earliest paintings are by Young, who adapted the staining technique of earlier Washington colorists to sow fields of pulsing, overlapping blots. Young's third of the show is a retrospective, and Clark's contributions date from the early 1970s to 2009. But most of Franklin's paintings are recent, so they reflect not just a different language, but also a less rigid ideology. Embracing mixed media elements and representational imagery, Franklin takes an anything-goes approach that's agreeably antithetical to mid-century abstraction's quest for purity. Ed Clark, Richard W. Franklin and Kenneth Young, The Language of Abstraction through June 24 at the University of Maryland University College Arts Program Gallery, 3501 University Boulevard, East, Adelphi, 301-985-7937, umuc.edu, slash art. Evoking a place and an era, or several of each, the art in Noche Christ's Fantastical Visions is as varied as psychedelic prints and idiosyncratic tchotchkes. The self-taught artist, 1909 to 2004, was born and raised in Romania, and there's a Middle European feel to such pictures as Carpathian Ancestor with Cat, one of several dozen Christ works now at Gallery 2112. The artist arrived in Washington in 1947, the bride of a U.S. Air Force officer, and later co-founded Gallery 10, a DuPont Circle institution from 1974 to 2010. Somewhere along this journey, Chris began making eye-popping abstractions such as pulsating diamond. This and several other exercises in hot pink op are tang near silk screen prints that depict folkloric old Europe visions of demons, crocodiles and succubi, alongside such new world moments as sitting bull goes to Washington. There's also a flock of wall-mounted sculptural bats and a group of polyester prostitutes, voluptuous headless women formed from clear plastic and filled intriguingly with small shiny objects. If Christ's art is often unabashedly decorative, its sensibility is definitely not Pottery Barn. No J. Christ Fantastical Visions through June 24 at Gallery 2112-2112 R Street. NW202-213-9768-Gallery2112.com